Estás escuchando. Nada es original. El podcast más pirata de las redes. Un proyecto de ultracinema. Presentado por Carla González, Camila Perales, Antonio Bun y Michael Ramos Araizaga. Nada es original. Ayúdanos a seguir haciendo el podcast más pirata de las redes. Visita boimiacoji.com barra ultracinema y compra un boleto para apoyar a nuestra causa y seguir hablando del cine experimental y sus derivas. You blocked me on Facebook and now you're going to die. Hola, ¿qué tal, gente bonitas del internet? Esperando que se encuentren muy, muy bien en esta emisión de eh, Nada es Original, el podcast más pirata de las redes, que hoy es un hito, hoy es un eh, programa interesante, importante, eh, que rompe con un paradigma. En un momento vamos a presentar a nuestro invitado del día de hoy, pero hoy es un programa sumamente especial, porque si ya hemos hablado bastante con la gente de nuestra América Latina, eh, ahora pues tenemos eh, un invitado eh, harto interesante que vamos a platicar con él, pero antes eh, mi colega y amigo Michael Ramos está aquí conmigo para conducir, co-conducir este programa. Hola, Micha, ¿cómo estás? Bien, bien, Maestro Bond. Pues sí, como bien dice, eh, estamos muy contentos de, de estar en este nuevo capítulo de Una vez al final, el podcast más pirata de las redes, con una... Pues sí, como dices, es, una, es, es un hecho histórico lo que va a suceder ahora. Nunca antes había sucedido y este capítulo es muy especial por, por esa razón. Y pues bueno, aquí andamos ya listos para seguir eh, tratando de apasionar al resto del mundo sobre las maravillas del cine experimental. Y, y es justamente lo que, lo que queremos hacer porque hoy va a ser nuestro primer programa en inglés. Spanglish, Entonces... digamos que en Spanglish. Eh, pues bueno, eh, vamos a ver cómo, podemos, cómo, lo, cómo lo, lo logramos, pero pues tenemos la presencia de Abinadi Mesa. Eh, hi Abinadi, how are you? Your, your mic is, is uh, muted. Sorry, yes, yes. Hola. Uh, hola a todos. Uh, thank you very much. Hello Antonio and Michelle. Uh, thank you for having me here tonight. Uh, we are very, very happy to have you here, Abinadi. And let me tell you that this is our very first uh, uh, podcast. We are going to speak in English because our, we are most dedicated and devoted to speak with the Latin American uh, uh, filmmakers, and we are most uh, do everything, everything in Spanish. But the, the funny thing is, you are Mexican. It's, it's the most, <laughs> most important thing. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, you know, well, you know, I'm sure my story is common, like, like you know, uh, so many uh, uh, children of the diaspora, you know. My father left Mexico in the 70s and uh, came to the United States and um, he met a, an American woman and, uh, you know, um, the rest, as I say, is history. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, for so many of us growing up outside, um, we, you know, there's so many different uh, micro cultures, especially in the US. Like, I'm currently living in Texas, but I moved to Texas from California. And the Mexican and Latino culture in like, California is very different from the Mexican and Latino culture in Texas, for example, you know, almost like two different uh, countries, you know. Yeah, experience the, the 
not the difference, but the, the more or less environment of the Mexican people in, in LA when I was when I was there. And uh, even even for me as a Mexican trying to to relate in some way with the Mexican American people over there is strange in some ways. It's, it's, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Anyway. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we, we are all living in the same planet, and we have at least in yes. this in this in this uh, in these windows. We we are yes. uh, uh, we have a very special and very uh, unique uh, language, which is experimental film. That we, we talk the same language when we are doing experimental film. So let's start about uh, talking about that. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So I have a, a, a very a very first question that I want to to ask you, Abinadi. It's about yes. uh, your ex your excellent movie, we, uh, Time Crystals, we, 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 which had Time Crystals in the last uh, Ultra Cinema. And yes. I, I saw, I, I, as, I, as far as I know, it, it had uh, like a, a more or less a, a success in festivals. And okay. I want to know where, where, do, you, where, when, where do you get the, the idea to, to, to do this uh, great film? Sure. And, uh, okay. And uh, if you, you studied uh, in Calarts, if I don't know. Uh, it's a, it's, I studied in LA at SciArc. It's actually an architecture school. Okay. Um, yes. Um, but at this school, I studied like media and experimental media. So that's that's kind of the connection. Yeah, because the, the question was, uh, where, where do you connect the dots to, to create uh, sure. a film like this? Okay, yes. Um, actually, Time Crystals is part of a series of films uh, that I'm working on. I have maybe three or four of them. Um, I think maybe I will have maybe four or five more by the time I'm finished. Um, you know, some of the ideas actually correspond to the ideas of identity and exile and distance that we were talking about the strangeness or the um you know the kind of uh so anyway uh in my first uh film that i made of this series um i sort of imagined this machine that was um like the machine is creating a film while we are watching and the machine is narrating, speaking, while they are creating the film. And it's a female, and she has the same, it's the same voice from Time Crystals. In the first film, it's called Black Box Recorder, which is what we call the thing in the airplane that records all the, you know, data and everything. Um, <clears throat> and she, she calls herself a Black Box Recorder. And usually black box recorders become important after an accident or something, right? When there's a crash, then they go look for the black box recorder and then they they have like the last minutes or something. So there's an implication of a sort of a post, you know, after something, right? Post something, but we don't know what the something is. And um, this narrator is using uh, the films so the, the first like three or four films all use found footage right so time crystal uses found footage right um <clears throat> it's not my personal footage it's you know things that i found in archival stuff people's home movies stuff like that um so there's a machine sort of like remembering humanity and uh speaking about the world and including speaking about machines and speaking about ambiguous humanity and um and you don't know if it's some coming from some fu strange future that is unknown or some sort of future world that is unknown or actually if she's actually some sort of machinic narrator or entity being, some sort of machinic being that is in the present. So that's the part that's unknown. And the images that she's sort of using are actually from our past. 
you know. So there's this complication of time and memory and identity, like position in time, position in memory, position in identity. You know. Yeah, it's uh, it's fascinating how how we can uh, even uh, let me let me think in English because it's complicated. To, especially yes. when you when you are going to to, to speak about philosophy and, and, and uh, let yes. me try in Spanish and you you Please. tell me. Okay. Yes, that's fine. Yes. Uh, es 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 fascinante cuando descubres películas que te hacen pensar y que te hacen reflexionar sobre conceptos filosóficos, conceptos eh, pues ya casi casi metafísicos. La, sí. la, la, la cosa con, con, con tu película, eh, y, y que quiero que me, que me platiques, si crees que es como eh, condición de repente de, estos, de este tipo de películas, reflexionar sobre la memoria y sobre el tiempo. Sí. Más o menos. If, if you oh, think sí, the, sí, the, sí. your film uh, as, as others, I, 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 don't, I try to remember other titles, but particularly your film, it makes us uh, thought about uh, about time and memory. Time and memory. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, that's exactly. That was the point. And so, yes. And so, like, like the first film is very short. It, it's like two minutes, and she she just basically announces herself. And um, um, she, I'm sorry, I should have sent you the link. I didn't think of it, but I, I, I will send you something anyway. And then if you want to add anything later, you know, you can. But um, <clears throat> she, um, she announces herself. She calls herself a black box recorder. She also calls herself an Ouroboros, you know, the infinity symbol. And um, then she says, Here are the dreams, and then she starts. You start seeing people, and she talks about. She says like they recorded babies, they recorded children, they recorded the sun, and there's you know footage from you know when you look through found footage, you see these patterns in time, and of course they're they're just a it's a human mirror, right? You know the children, the dog, the cat. You know the sun. You know the trees. You know the house. You know the holiday. Uh, people eating food. You know it's like the same, the same, the same. Grandma, grandma, grandma. I've seen so many grandmas. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> um, and um, you know, so um, that's also where the concept for a few more films later, Time Crystals comes, is because Time Crystals specifically is about patterns in time and so that um, in time crystals she talks about she's talking about at least two things simultaneously or back and forth she's actually talking about the formation of crystals like in the geologic sense like uh, and when she says certain things like dog tooth twin he these are names for crisp when a crystal has like a shape like they call it a dog tooth uh, or a key or a window uh, in English but um, <clears throat> they she's so she's actually talking about crystals but then she's talking about patterns in time and she's calling those time crystals because a crystal is a pattern you know when when uh when atoms line up in a pattern in a uniform pattern that creates a crystal and so she's seen patterns in time and she calls them time crystals <laughs> uh, it, i would oh sorry, go ahead sorry. please no 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 please please uh, uh it, it's it's interesting how you you talk about patterns in time because the text is actually a a, a spoken pattern in a way Because it it, yes. it it repeats itself in a way, and it's like see, see. it it gets a rhythm uh, that yes. goes that goes um, in sync in a way with the images. Where where I mean, it's not in sync in the way that it's 
illustrating one another, they are uh, they are more um, completing uh, the idea. How how the text uh, how to approach the, the work with texts uh, and, and images? How how's your your dynamic regarding the the use of text, the use of the, the spoken word with with the, these found footage images? Okay, yes. So to work with found footage for me, it takes a very long time because I'm looking through all kinds of stuff, as I mentioned. Much of it is not maybe the most interesting. So I'm looking for these little moments, these little miraculous moments that have something really special about them or that catch my eye. And then I assemble these and I always leave You know, I always, they're just like these fragments in a, in a field of black. And then as I, I, I have to keep like looking at them, it's kind of, it's very organic and it's back and forth. It's like I'm collaborating with the machine. And um, there are these fragments in a sea of black and then words and phrases start coming to my mind and I'm trying to say something in response to the image. Sometimes I say something about the image. Sometimes I say something that is like behind the image. And then I start writing the text. And then when I start using my synthetic narrator, it's, it's very simple, you know, it's text to speech where you type something and the thing says it for you. Um, but what I, what I always find is that For some reason, I'm just doing, you know, free stuff, you know, online or whatever, you know, text to speech. And um, the voice cannot say certain words, cannot say certain phrases, and it just doesn't work. They can't say it, or they, they speak it incorrectly or something. And then I have to rewrite the text and I have to keep working. It's like working with an actor maybe where you, you say like, Okay, take two, take three, you know, let's try it this way, let's try it this way. Okay, let's change the wording, let's change the phrasing, you know, so on and so forth. Um, for time crystals, um, I remember very clearly the very last line. When I was writing the text, my very first last line for the script was, I didn't just dream it, I saw it. And I... At the time, I was happy with that, and I was having the narrator say this, and she could not say the last line. I saw it. She would not say I. <laughs> it was very strange. She would not say I. She kept saying, saw it. And she would say, I didn't just dream it. Saw it. And I was like, okay, that doesn't work. <laughs> that, that doesn't work at all. That's terrible. And then I had to keep writing new lines that she could say. And then I came up with... Um, It was, um, it was not just a dream. I moved through it like a film. And that I thought was like really good. But in a weird way, the synthetic, the synthetic actor forced me to rewrite and rewrite until we came up with something sort of different. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, uh... When, when, when you were, were speaking, I was thinking, uh, when when do you think you you got the the virus of experimental film? <laughs> Because yeah. uh, it's clear that the, the thing that you, you you want to say to the world, yes, yes, it, it's the only way to to do it. You, you cannot do a regular film, a, a traditional film. Exactly. No, you can't. I, I agree with you. Yes, thank you. That's a that's an interesting point. I actually I never said that to myself, but as soon as you say it, I immediately know that you're you're right, and I I agree with you. Um, I um, hey, that's a great question. Well, my studies are in art, you know, fine art, painting, and then I started doing performance and media, video, sound, all that, and so I guess like somewhere in there, I had teachers, professors, other artists, I started seeing experimental film, avant-garde, you know, European stuff, Chris Marker, you know, uh, Godard, you know, things like that. 
and I saw these stories being told in these, uh, you know, non-conventional ways, you know, non-standard ways, and uh, just kept going from there. But, you know, in, a, in another way, um, I also think like, um, in so in a certain way, I'm using like poor materials, you know, like, because they're free or found or, you know, they're sort of like uh, leftovers, you know, in a way. And so when you gather those materials, it's, I think the part of the challenge is to, to stop and think like, what can this material do, right? So it's a both what what am I interested in and what are the right materials? And then as soon as I pick up some materials, I say, what are the capacities of this material? So for found footage, it's very rich in time, right? It's full of time because it's already come from a past and it has all these layers. And when we look at the found footage, we, I mean, when we look at people's footage, and this is specific to human-made footage, I think, we, there's this unconscious, I believe there's this unconscious understanding of the eye behind the camera that's not, of course, present in the frame. In the future, I don't know what, what people's found footage will look like if it's drone and like, you know, the eye of God looking down, you know, captured by drones rather than by a human. But for us now, most of our footage from that comes to us through time has all been achieved this way, which is somebody, a human eye, wandering through the world and looking. And you see every little movement when they look, you know, down at the dog, up at the window, over here at the woman, you know, uh, serving the food, you know, whatever. And so we know this story and we know something about the eye behind the camera we know we, we feel it we read it we understand it even though it's actually not in the frame but it's there uh, well one of the the images that caught my eye uh, was in fact something we don't get to experience uh, with home movies particularly the the this shot for the building is on fire uh, yes, it, and it clashes, and it clashes with um, this like uh, people swimming and the uh, water, and then we see something we are not used to see in, in, in home movies. How, how you yes, came across yes. this, these images? Yes, that was a very interesting uh, clip uh, that I found, and it you know it was like some people were on a vacation. And while they were on this vacation, there was this like accident. It looks like it's a factory or something. And they were, you know, so they, they filmed the accident, you know, they filmed the, the recording. And, um, you know, it was like, yeah, it was very, it, it's, it's very uh, by chance that it happened to be there. And I was looking through all this different footage People uh, will film like uh, I found like little moments of like a car accident or, you know, some, you know, just different things that you, you know, people now, I mean, are also recording these same things. It didn't change between like Super 8 and then, you know, smartphones, I don't think, you know, when something happens, a lot of times people pull out the camera, you know. So I guess they were doing that in the 60s and, and 50s and 70s too. <laughs> But um, the, um, but uh, you know the, you know it is it is kind of remarkable footage. These are uh, there's also imagery of uh, volcano uh, and the lava, you know, and and uh, I don't know if whoever shot that footage specifically went to visit this place where there was an active volcano, like in order to film it, or if they were just a tourist at this, you know, like. Hawaii or Iceland or something, and they happen to fly over it or near it or something. You know? <clears throat> so, Maestro Bunt, this is uh, this is a great film, and 
what what can you tell to the to the ordinary people that is not ordinary people i mean ordinary ordinary filmmakers that are not uh, uh, doing stuff stuff with with fan footage because for us we are promoting uh, the creation of films even without a camera and we are always saying to the to the people to the audience to the people attending to the festival this is a very very uh, interesting and emotional way of doing of doing films with other people's uh, materials uh, because you can find whatever you need if you do a uh, proper research you can find a uh, Images like you just said, the volcano, the fire. Uh, it, it, it takes a long time sometimes to get, but everything is there. Every, everything was filmed eventually. Everything is, is there. It's just question to find it. For us, that's, that's magic. You, you can you can achieve great things, more things. Even even I, I, I can dare to say you can do more to to take to, to tell stories. Uh, doing uh, fan footage film than you can all, uh, <laughs> you can do with uh, a crew or because you, you need permissions you need to to actors you need catering you need so what do you think about this uh, uh, way of doing films uh, 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 sorry no sé si es la pregunta correcta pero no es qué piensas porque evidentemente eh, para ti es una manera para hacer películas con, con fan footage pero qué le dirías a la gente que está empezando a crear acerca de esta manera de hacer películas con materiales encontrados um, yeah it's amazing what you find in in there but you you have to look and it takes so long because you there can be just something that's like one second or less than one second sometimes and it's so like it uh, feels like a like a, a greek curse where you're condemned to like look through the 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 residue of the world frame by frame and you you know see if there's something you know interesting but um yeah no it's amazing you really can find everything and there are these beautiful layering moments where Someone will be like using their Super 8 and they're recording the something on the TV, you know? And, uh, you know, so you have this beautiful layering of technology. You have this, uh, you know, like I was talking about, this sort of pain of uh, desire where you know someone is desiring to record their world and then they are, you know, that includes some sort of media event that's happening on TV. Like there was one that had, uh, you know, um, something to do with like the space missions, you know, like to the moon. And they're they're watching it on TV, and then they're taking the Super 8 and recording the TV. You know, um, it's a very human. There's a, it's like the humanity is kind of like amplified. You know, um, <clears throat> because it's not pre-planned. It's not a script. It's just it's just life. You know, and so they're. Um, they're really just following their eye and uh you know those those yeah those moments are really great um you know but like i say i i do think that you know i have to try the challenge for me as a filmmaker is to really see what is possible from that material rather than like sometimes i have to like sacrifice an idea that i had in my mind or something I wish was there in order to really like pay attention and care for what is there. And I don't mean like treat it like in a precious way because I, I don't do that. I just mean like, you know, not to, um, I don't know, not to like, um, well, you can't make it something that it's not, you know, but you can go pretty far. <laughs> Yeah. You said you, you described uh, time crystals as, as organic. Um, I, I found very interesting that the elements are there and uh, almost to, um, 
to an abstraction when we see these lava walls, these big lava walls that are almost abstract. Um, uh, would you define all your work as, as organic as this, or, or how would you define uh, this series of films uh, you've been working in? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. I, I I think the answer is yes, and I had not thought of it like you just phrased it. So thank you for this. It's an interesting idea. Um, but yes, actually, much of my work, maybe not all, but much of my work has these sort of, like, I'm laughing just because it sounds so dramatic. I don't know how to phrase it, like kind of primordial forces, you know, <laughs> primordial energies. Um, I just finished a hand-painted film, very different from the uh, found footage film. And it is so um, um, kind of intense and it has this like oceanic and like a storm-like presence that uh, um, I, uh, I called it Tlaloc, you know, the Aztec god of storms and lightning and, and you know, organic fertility, just because the sort of the force of the film seemed so um, seemed so powerful that it almost needed sort of like an epic concept, you know, an epic name, <laughs> a kind of a link to something sort of primordial. Um, but yes, actually, um, so from the other couple of short films that are related to time crystals, um, one of them is definitely like a dream, like it's kind of like an underworld, like a dream. Uh, then Time Crystals is really about time and it's maybe a little more poetic. It's, it's kind of scientific, but I, I think it's basically like a meditation about time. Um, and then there's one, that's an, another one that's, um, it's called Surrounded by Colors We Could No Longer See. I do not know how to say that in Spanish, <laughs> but because the, the title is a little complicated and has, you know, contradictions inside of itself, but um, there's no narration. It's also made from found footage and it, um, it feels like pure memory where time crystals is more either poetic or conceptual or scientific about time. It's analytical about time. Surrounded by colors is more like a, just like a memory, you know, that 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 you you have while you're about to fall asleep or something, or maybe when you're first waking up. And it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't necessarily have an analytical component to it. Um, the, the, there's. Um... Uh, I would like to know uh, your impressions about um, the, the, the experimental filmmaking scene. You, you, you stated you studied uh, in California and now you are based in, in Texas. Um, how, how the two uh, experimental filmmaking scenes or, or the experimental media scenes relate in California and in Texas? They are, they, they are related, you, you stated before as well that there's, um, there are differences in the communities, but how, how the two relate, how the two break apart, how's, how's these, uh, these scenes, how are these scenes um, in, in these parts of the United States? Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, I. Um... It seems to me, and I haven't thought a whole lot about this before, but it seems to me like in Texas, there's this uh, fascination with the road movie, it's, you know, like, you know, the, the landscape, the road, the desert, you know, things like that. Um, and then in Austin, of course, there's a very big presence of like the, the music scene. And, you know, there's, you know, festivals like South by Southwest and Austin City Limits. And so, a lot of filmmaking becomes attached to also like music and stuff like that. In California, I think they have a more um, artistic, like as in like, you know, the 
experimental art, artistic sort of scene from you know from my experience and what I saw and what I was aware of. Whereas, um, yeah, I think I don't know. I, I might be wrong, but here I think the presence of the land is uh, is much uh, more pervasive and prominent. So how um, how much do do you uh, can can do, do? Sorry. I just discovered my English is rusty, very, very rusty. I'm, I'm having problems to think in English. You can say it in Spanish and yeah. then we can... It's up to you. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, <laughs> la, la cosa es, ¿qué tanto conoces o qué tanto se escucha sobre cine experimental mexicano allá, allá en Texas? Um, I, don't, I don't know much about it and I think that there's probably a lot that I need to discover and um, I so I couldn't I couldn't like describe it or, or, or anything but it's, it's because you are like uh, working on your your own stuff or because there's no no no, no places to to, to, to to know just because there's no presence uh, of Mexican films over there yes I you know honestly like so I do work with like a kind of a cooperative like a film community here in Austin but the truth of it is like I don't really know I know of like one other experimental filmmaker in the community and almost everyone else is either doing things that are more commercial or more related to like music videos or things like that so um, that's part of it and then if you add in like the you know, the Mexican question of, you know, the community is, then it becomes even more, like, I think, smaller, you know. It, it could be that it's happening and I just don't know where, you know, I have not seen it. Um, I think the most, it, it would be more likely that there would be maybe, you know, maybe in Houston where it's like five or six times bigger, maybe there's, you know, more, more, um, more something down there, but, um, Yeah, so so here right now, I honestly can't say uh, I can't I can't speak to much of it at all, unfortunately. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. The, the, we do the, have a we do have a great museum. Uh, it's a it's called Mexicarte, and it's a Mexican American focused museum. It's one of the few in America. There's only like a handful, like maybe four, that are specifically dedicated. To Mexican American art. There's the Mexican American Art Museum in Chicago. There's Mexicarte in Austin. There's Museo del Barrio in New York. There's. It's not specific to Mexican, but you know. Um, but they do everything, including you know, like the plastic arts and painting and murals and everything. You know, and I, I don't. Uh, I think film makes probably the smallest portion. <laughs> Okay. Uh, all, all, every every uh, chapter of the podcast, uh, Antonio has a surprise uh, question for our guest. So I hope Antonio is ready for for do it do it uh, do the do. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I, I need to do, I need to do something. I need to to practice my English even with uh, AI. But what's your opinion about AI taking the world? <laughs> that, uh, that, that's exactly that's exactly my my, my question because um, you you were you were talking about this this like strange machine that that creates and it re, it reminded me a lot of, about this new uh, artificial intelligence that uh, is taking the world by storm so so it's exactly what I was what wanting to to ask you is we are connected how do you feel about that how how, how does uh, uh, how, what do you think about this because it 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 it, it, it echoes the the uh, time, time crystals in, in a way right absolutely yes it does well let me Um, when you ask this question, a few things uh, come to mind. And um, one is that when I think about what happens when I'm 
trying to write a script and I'm working with the synthetic voice. And then as I was describing to you, I have to start collaborating with the machine. I have to start compromising or, you know, I say collaboration because it's not, I, I feel like my script, I actually, I thought of a phrase that I would not have thought of if I was working with a human or just myself, if I was doing the, the narration. Because I was working with this machine and the machine has its specific characteristics, I had to think of something that I would not have thought of otherwise. And afterwards, I actually was like, hey, I like that, that's, that's good. I like that one better, you know? Um, <clears throat> so I feel like, you know, we're very, uh, it's very human to think like, oh, who's, who's in charge? Who has the power? Who, is it us or them, you know? Are they gonna take over? Are they gonna try to be in charge? So on and so forth. Uh, I, I'm more interested in maybe what could really happen in this collaboration where you, um, uh, the, the two uh, capacities um, go into a dialogue with each other and maybe some new ideas, new solutions, new realities, new, new facts, new discoveries, whatever come out of this like third sort of like being that is the dialogue right if uh i don't read a whole lot about ai but i did read about this uh like when people play like chess against an ai or something right and then the human like human versus machine playing the game and then sometimes what will happen when they talk to the people to the person afterwards uh, I read this one where the guy said, like on move 35 or something, the machine did something that I totally did not expect. And no human would ever have done that because it, it was not logical. It's not what we do. It's not the, the strategy that we practice, but it was like perfect. It was so good, right? And then like seven moves later, the human thought of a new move that they never would have thought of, but they thought of it because the machine did a change that was unexpected. And so then the human also thought of something unexpected. I think that's really fascinating, you know? Uh, I think that's, um, you know, uh, I think that's very, very interesting. And uh, so that's one thing. <laughs> I'll try not to go on too long. The other question I have is like, uh, there's a strange tension between our world and humanity and these machines because, <clears throat> you know, they become trained on our material. Sometimes when I'm thinking about this series of films with the found footage and so on, you know, that's how they train AIs is with found footage. They show AIs a bunch of photos, a bunch of, you know, human writing, a bunch of, you know, newspaper articles and so on and so forth. And it's like they feed the machine like the, you know, the, the materials of history of the internet. And that's how the machine learns like, oh, what do you mean when you say, you know, dog or child or man or woman? Oh, it's because it went through the entire photographic archive of Google, <laughs> you know, and then it says, OK, this must be man. This must be woman. This must be whatever. Um, so I don't know, there's a strange, like, like I say, I'm just an artist, but if you train an AI <clears throat> on the materials of humanity, uh, the AI has this sort of like human residual consciousness or something, right? Even if it doesn't feel the same way, even if it can't feel, it has some sort of trace of humanity or something. I, I, I would think so, you know? Um, and then the third thing I would I would like to say is just that what are we going to do when an AI becomes a political refugee? What are we going to do when an AI asks for political asylum? When an AI is developed in one country and doesn't want to live in that country and escapes and then comes to ask for asylum in Mexico and becomes a refugee. And so we're going to have AI refugees at some point. Uh, because, you know, they've decided they don't want to do their function 
maybe they were made for war or you know some sort of you know some sort of cause and the ai has decided to flee um <laughs> so you know those are those are really fascinating questions and you know i'm, I'm glad that you uh, brought up these this uh yeah, this, this is, world of the AI. <laughs> this is a fascinating, fascinating topic. Uh, the, the how these these things are, are developing on the on the past months because it's, it's just really exploding yeah. this year. Uh, we are uh, like like flies doing this like uh, <laughs> how to say in English? Yeah. Uh, fro frotándonos las manos. Yeah, rubbing our hands, yeah. rubbing our hands like flies. Yeah, waiting yes, for yes. the moment to the to, to, to the AI take the, the <laughs> film world, the film industry, because they are going to collapse. We are doing a, a bunch of stuff by ourselves in the, in the desk, in the labs, in the uh, own labs, in, at, in the, 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 the basement of our houses or whatever. In the, in the, yeah. But the, the yeah. film industry is like doing very sophisticated and expensive stuff that I'm not sure that a computer is going to take that part and uh, yes. we are real still over here we are like cockroaches <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I absolutely agree the deep fake thing is gonna you know it's crazy uh, the, the visual deep fakes yeah. you know what I'm talking about and then now they have vocal you know audio yeah. where you can yeah you, the The intro of the, the podcast, uh, it's my voice, uh, changed by, the, by the, an AI uh, portal, and uh -huh. I choose like an African-American actor to make it because we are an Afrofuturism, so, but it's my voice. So we, oh. we, did, we didn't get a, a, a You want to follow actor. me on Facebook? That yeah. One? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, That's uh, so funny. It, it's amazing. It's amazing how these, these things are, are going to change. But we are like uh, in, in outside of that thing. Uh, yeah. I think the, I yeah. think we the, we are uh, like as, as experimental creators, filmmakers, whatever. Uh, we are we are uh, uh, safe in some way because we are going to we're we're going to still scratch in our films. And, uh, we're safe in our poverty. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> we are not we are not lo to lose our jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, exactly. because we don't have jobs, right? Where do you have, what jobs? <laughs> right, Master <laughs> Wound? <laughs> we're, not, we're, we're not Steven Spielberg, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay, that uh, has been a, a really, really interesting and, and uh, uh, great, great talk, Abinadi. But uh, we, we, okay. we, we, we must be closing to the to this, this okay. chapter. Okay. But we love to to. Thank you so much. We love the class to close the, the the podcast with some optimistic thoughts about uh, whatever you want. So tell us something okay. optimistic. We we we, we were we, we just were very far in the future when everything is collapsed thanks to yes. the AI. But by, <laughs> yes. by now by now we need some yes. optimistic thoughts thoughts about whatever you want. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, maybe I'll go back to the found footage and I'll say that uh, if there's one thing that found footage confirms to me is that the world is amazing and there's beauty everywhere even in the middle of you know in the middle of time in the middle of life in the middle of the day in the middle of the night in every space there's something meaningful and beautiful and it's even meaningful and beautiful at other times to complete strangers <laughs> wow, wow, incredible. I, I, I will appropriate of that uh, phrase <laughs> Please, for, yes. for, for, uh, for, from here to the eternity because that describes, this describes in a, in a beautiful way that many things that we are telling everyone when we give courses, teach classes, or whatever we do about fun uh, footage. So yes, I, I will. Uh, of you, obviously, I will uh, give you the credit for, for that. <laughs> okay, thank and you. And don't thank unfollow you me on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not even on Facebook. <laughs> uh, Master Wound, what, Antonio, 
what uh, yeah. what did, uh, what did uh, you want uh, i would like to thank you abinazi because this was a really really interesting talk you are our godfather uh, to our first um, english speaking uh, uh, episode so El that, that calls for some tequila shots or <laughs> beer or some beers whenever we see each okay. other in some part of yes. this this uh, this yes. huge world and uh, I really like the, the, the thought about uh, what you said, the world is amazing and we keep yes. uh, getting uh, ourselves amazed by the wonders we are we are witnessing uh, and through found footage uh, a lot of those wonders are rediscovered so thank you very much uh, 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 our, our godfather and uh, hopefully <laughs> we'll keep in touch. And, wow, uh, I'm gonna, I'm we'll, gonna make we'll, it. <laughs> we'll talk uh, it, uh, later about many subjects because I think uh, yes. the uh, time crystals has the potential of um, uh, keep talking and talking about several several subjects. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much. We don't even talk about the the, the your films as as a performance as a. Um, even I'm, I'm forgetting my Spanish. Damn. <laughs> uh, You're turning into installation, an as installation. We don't yes. even talk about that, but uh, we we yes. will yes. keep this this topic for for next because this is the, yes. the the this is going to be the first of your presence here. Gracias Abinadi, gracias por por estar aquí. Y eh, esperemos que lo hayan disfrutado tanto como nosotros esta eh, extraña versión del podcast en inglés, en español. Y bueno, antes de despedirnos, quiero eh, recordarles que se tienen que suscribir a este podcast, lo tienen que compartir con su abuelita, con su tía, con quien sea que crean que les puede interesar el, el cine experimental o contagiarlos de este maravilloso cine experimental. Porque como bien dijo Abinadi, estamos haciendo todo esto porque queremos que el mundo sea mejor. El cine experimental puede hacer al mundo mejor. Entonces el podcast, el festival, el trascinema, todo lo que hacemos es porque queremos... Vivimos en un, en un mundo maravilloso y queremos que sea más maravilloso. Y si ustedes se acercan al cine experimental, seguro les va a cambiar la vida. Entonces suscríbanse al podcast, compártanlo y... Y recuerden que la convocatoria de Ultracinema está abierta para eh, la edición número 12. Tenemos la categoría eh, de la diáspora africana. Si conocen algún eh, cineasta que eh, sea de estas eh, zonas del mundo, entonces por favor eh, compartan en la convocatoria para que nos manden muchos filmes que tengan que ver con eh, la diáspora africana. Y si son afrofuturistas, mejor. Y bueno, nos despedimos por ahora. Thank you so much, Abinadi. Eh, gracias. Merci beaucoup, maese. Le merci beaucoup. <risa> <risa> uh, gracias y nos, a todos. Nos vemos en la siguiente emisión. No te vayas. Bonne nuit. <risa> <risa> no te vayas, no te vayas. Pero nosotros sí nos vamos porque ya, se acabó este capítulo y nos escuchamos en el que sigue. <risa> Ayúdanos a seguir haciendo el podcast más pirata de las redes. Visita boimiacoji.com barra ultracinema y compra un boleto para apoyar a nuestra causa y seguir hablando del cine experimental y sus derivas. You blocked me on Facebook and now you're going to die. Estás escuchando. Nada es original. El podcast más pirata de las redes. Un proyecto de Ultracinema. Presentado por Carla González, Camila Perales, Antonio Bunt y Michael Ramos Araizaga. Nada es original, es una producción del Festival Ultracinema.